Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 20 video. Today I'm going to be going over the new ninth inning program, one of the best program boss packs to ever have been dropped. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe for more MLB The Show 20 content. I put a ton of consistent content out there that I'm sure you'll enjoy, and drop a like on the video it helps me out a ton. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the henchman pack and the boss pack for the new ninth inning program. Like I said, insane content drop. I'm going to be giving my advice on who you should take out of each pack. Again, these are just my opinions, so take them with a grain of salt. I do play this game in a high level, but at the end of the day, it all depends on who you're comfortable with and what positions you have of need. Jumping right into the henchman pack, we have a 97 overall Rookie of the Year Craig Kimbrell card. We have a 97 overall Signature Series Vita Blue starting pitcher card and a 96 overall Gold Glove Steve Finley. Let's get Steve Finley out of the way first. As much as they tried to hype him up on stream, let's be honest, this is a throwaway card. Uh, probably under no circumstances should you have this guy in your outfield at this point in the year. There's way, way, way too many good options to be playing this guy in ranked seasons, in my opinion. Does have diamond defense in center field, but only 71 speed. Uh, I'm not even going to give this guy a second look, to be honest with you. Um, now let's look at Kimbrel, who's always pretty interesting. If you guys are new to the game or you haven't played for many years, Kimbrel cards usually are pretty terrible on this game. Um, but this is the first time he's had a slider ever, so that's intriguing. He's got almost maxed out per nines as he should, but like I said, historically, repertoire is more important than per nines, especially if you play on like 700 rating or lower. Um, I don't think this card will be very good, but he's worth at least giving a shot to see how his slider plays. He's probably going to hang a lot of pitches for you uh, with his off speed with 68 walks per nine. But, you know, it's a henchman pack. You could do worse than basically maxed out per nines from a reliever from a henchman pack. So don't hate the card. Finally, we have 97 Sig Series Vita Blue, who looks pretty interesting to me on paper. Uh, if you guys haven't faced Vita Blue much, he's got a very unique pitch delivery in that he comes way over the top from the left side. Um, kind of adds some perceived velocity to his fastball, in my opinion, which is already going to be hitting 100 miles an hour. And this is the first high diamond Vita Blue card we've gotten that actually has a slider as well, which is a big deal. Usually his repertoire is just four seam curveball change up two seam. They added a slider to his Sig Series card which adds a mid-level of velocity and helps increase his speed differentials greatly. I'm a big fan of this card. If you're going to ask me for my opinion on who you should take out of the henchman pack, it's either Kimbrel or Blue. I think Kimbrel has the better potential to just jump into someone's team right away. A lot of people um, have five starters they've been rocking with already that are better than this Vita Blue. So depending on your comfort level with your starting pitching, you may not want this Vita Blue. You may want to go with Craig Kimbrell instead and just see how he plays with the maxed out per nines in your bullpen. Uh, but for me, I'm going to be taking Vita Blue because you guys know I love starting pitcher variety. I really don't think this card is that bad. Um, he's borderline good <laughs> on paper, so we'll see how he plays. 117 stamina, also very good at this point in the year after the starting pitcher energy patch that they put out. So I like Vita Blue out of this pack. Don't sleep on Kimbrel though. Could maybe be good, but historically pretty bad. And finally, jumping into the good stuff, the three bosses that you get at 300 stars for the ninth inning program. This is probably the best inning program I've ever seen them drop. Like I said earlier in the video, all three of these cards in game for sure. So if it sounds like I'm dogging on a card when I go over these, it's not that I think the card is bad at all. Like I just said, all three are probably in game. I'm just trying to help you guys get perspective on who's better for the meta and who will bring the most improvement to your team. So let's start off with 99 Honus Wagner. This guy was the collection reward last year. Uh, the same thing that 99 Mike Trout is this year, but was actually harder to get. Um, this guy is basically Ty Cobb at shortstop if you look at his attributes and you guys know how much I love Ty Cobb. He's going to have diamond fielding at shortstop with the 90 fielding. He's got 95 speed, almost 90 power to both sides. Let's be honest, this card is off the charts in game with the position versatility as well. Um, I know you guys are going to be wondering if this guy's better than Tatis. I think it's really close. And for me personally, I'm going to be rocking Honus Wagner at either second or third base and uh, leaving Tatis at shortstop. I'm going to be using both. So this card is off the charts good. If you guys didn't know, uh, Honus, Hornsby, Cobb, Gehrig, uh, and Fox, just off the top of my head, are all old timers on this game with the same swing. And their swing is very, very good on this game. One of the best swings in the game. I talked about it in the last inning video with Ty Cobb's swing. Uh, these old timers just have great two-handed follow-through swings on this game. This guard is going to hit for way more power than he shows, just like Ty Cobb does. Uh, diamond defense, absolutely love this card. 
in love with this card, gonna be picking him up for sure. Also, as a prestige version, which is prestige is not that bad, the program, you only need like 100 hits. Um, he's gonna get up to 98 speed, 99 stealing, which adds another dimension. And also, he does have the 99 bunt, 99 drag bunt, if you are into that kind of stuff. I'm not, but it's there. <laughs> Next up is 99 Kenley Jansen, same signature series card as last year. This card was pretty definitively the best relief pitcher in the entire game in MLB The Show 19. Hasn't changed much this year. Basically a carbon copy of the Mariano Rivera card and will also be prestigeable, so that's pretty cool. Um, his cutter's gonna get up to 99 miles an hour as a prestige, which is amazing. 91 walks per 9, 92 control. Uh, he's gonna be able to throw his cutter basically wherever he wants. This is a dominant closing pitcher card. Uh, very big fan. And finally, we have 99 Jimmy Fox, which is one of the craziest cards I've ever seen them release. Uh, this card's a better hitter than Albert Pujols, which just came out, and he has a catcher secondary position. So, <laughs> this is insane. Like I said, when I was going over Honus, he's got the same swing as Honus and Hornsby. Amazing swing, so much exit velocity, and he's going to bring basically maxed out contact and over 113 power to both sides. This is maybe the best hitting card in the game. Uh, that we have so far just completely absurd So now that we've gone over each card Let's talk about who you should be taking out of your choice pack in my opinion I'm gonna start with Kinley Jansen remember I am NOT dogging this card at all all three of these cards are in game But as far as what you get as far as improving your team as far as comparing how good the card is Relative to other options that we already have I think Kinley Jansen is easily the worst choice in this pack We already have Mariano Rivera who is a carbon copy of this card, like I said. They also just released a 97 Wade Davis who has basically this exact pitch repertoire except for a curveball instead of a changeup, so that's another option that's only gonna cost you like 20K stubs that uh, is pretty on par with this card aside from a little bit of control ratings. You should only rock four righty relievers in your bullpen and they've been throwing a ton of in-game relief pitching options at us recently. I do think Kinley is a top four in the game, but compared to what we already have, I don't think he's the pick out of this pack. I think you can get a lot more value taking someone else out of this pack. Moving on to both Honus and Fox, let me say that this is really, really close in my opinion. I already told you guys I'm picking up both. I'll probably end up picking up Jansen as well, uh, but Honus and Fox will be in my starting lineup. So it really comes down to your comfort level with who you already have in your starting lineup and what positions you think you need filled. As far as objectively the better card, I think it's Fox, but let's talk about both Honus and Fox. So Honus is definitely in game by every stretch of the imagination. Five tool player, positional versatility. Worst comes to worst, he can be the be one of the best bench players in the game. Uh, the problem is we just got 99 Fernando Tatis Jr who is basically 99 Mike Trout at shortstop. A lot of people love Tatis. A lot of people already have their shortstop position filled for the rest of the year. So then you have to ask yourself if you'd like to play Honus at second base, third base, or left field, or even first base, although first base is very deep. So for me, I'm gonna be moving Hornsby to third base and playing Honus at second base because I think that's the best spot for him. But depending on who you have at second and third base, you may not have that big of an upgrade with this guy. I'm a big preacher of sticking with guys that you're comfortable with. Um, I know Tatis is in game, so shortstop is already taken. So as far as upgrades, as far as better than the competition, I think Honus Wagner is in second place as far as this choice pack goes, but don't get me wrong, one of the best cards in the game. And finally, we have my choice out of this pack, which is gonna be Jimmy Fox. A lot to unpack with Jimmy Fox. Like I said earlier, a better hitter than Pujols and can play catcher. I really think that's why he's the move here. Um, we've never ever had a card that can play catcher that is this good of a hitter, especially with the swing that he has. I know Piazza has great hitting attributes on this game, but Piazza's swing is very slow. The difference between Jimmy Fox's swing and Piazza's swing is night and day. One of the best swings in the game, almost maxed out hitting attributes at catcher. is just really unfair. I did not ever think they were gonna give us a Jimmy Fox card with catcher because I thought it would be too OP but here we are so a lot to unpack because of the defense right I know that's what you're worried about 
can Jimmy Fox play good catcher defense? He's not going to play good catcher defense for you. And this may actually develop a meta where people are running speed teams to an extent to take advantage of people running Jimmy Fox at catcher. It'll be interesting to see the dynamic that plays out. But in my opinion, Jimmy Fox is a better catcher than anyone else in the game by a pretty wide margin because I value offense a lot. I know in previous videos I've talked about I value defense at catcher a lot, but I think what this card brings offensively um, above every other option far outweighs what he loses defensively compared to other options. So long story short, he's going to play pretty me mediocre behind the plate. People are, are going to try to run on you, but I think he makes up for it with his bat. As a prestige version, the arm strength does get up to 78. I don't think that's horrible. He will also get up to 75 fielding, which means he'll have silver defense behind the dish. Someone did post on the internet that I read today that Jimmy Fox has 52 block rating at catcher. 52 blocking is really bad. I'm not going to get around that, but I find blocking on this game to be pretty RNG. For example, I've been running 95 Pablo Sandoval a lot at catcher this year, and he pretty much has blocked everything, as opposed to when I use Pudge Rodriguez, who has really high diamond attributes. He lets several balls slip through his five hole consistently. In summary, just to repeat myself one more time, I think Fox carries a much bigger bat than anyone else at the catcher position and I think his offense the difference between him and the next guy offensively more than makes up for the difference between him and the next guy defensively Jimmy Fox will probably be my starting catcher for the rest of the year so I hope this video was helpful for you guys let me know down in the comments section below what you thought of my opinions please remember these are just my opinions I'm just trying to help you guys out don't hate me if you disagree with me uh, but yeah let me know in the comments who are you taking out of this pack and if you're gonna pick up any of the other options as well like I said I'm getting Honus and Fox for sure and I'll probably end up with Jansen depending on where my stub count is that as always Appreciate the support and love from all of you. This has been a crazy good year for me. I'm going to try to keep it rolling, but you guys make it happen. And if you're new, please subscribe, like I said in the beginning, and drop a like. Helps me out a ton. Thank you guys for everything. Would love to hear your opinions on these cards. Enjoy the ninth inning program, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.